On this video, I want to share with you the prompting techniques that I use to extract as much value as possible from ChatGPT. ChatGPT has been out for a while now and the more I use it, the more I see it as a tool that makes me more productive rather than a threat that is going to take my job. A recent study conducted by Purdue University discovered that when presented with 517 questions from Stack Overflow, ChatGPT provided answers with inaccuracies or non-functional code 52% of the time. Here you can see ChatGPT answers compared to Stack Overflow answers. According to this study, ChatGPT ranks lower in correctness, comprehensiveness, conciseness, and usefulness compared to Stack overflow. Another problem is that the model was found to produce convincing answers with confident language, even if the answer was wrong or only half right. Since it sometimes hallucinates and makes stuff up, we can't trust all the answers it gives us. We have to have some understanding of the topic we are asking about to be able to evaluate the answers it gives us. That's why I believe that ChatGPT is a tool that if used correctly will make us more productive rather than something that is going to replace us completely. To use it more effectively, we need to learn how to ask it the right questions and how to frame the questions as well. It's like Google. If you don't search well, you're not going to get good search results. Researchers from Vanderbilt University's computer science department in Tennessee released a paper with a number of prompt patterns that are proven to get us better answers out of ChatGPT. I read that paper so you wouldn't have to and I picked out the best bit to share with you. My favorite pattern is on this list. It makes getting the best outputs from ChatGPT effortless. So make sure you watch until the end to find out which one it is. These patterns may be more or less effective depending on what you need. So feel free to mix or alternate them until you find out what works better for your questions. The persona pattern. Using the persona pattern, we can guide ChatGPT in determining the kind of responses to produce and the specific details to focus on. With this pattern, we can tailor ChatGPT to consistently adopt a specific viewpoint or perspective. For example, if you wanted to review your code and find bugs in it, first tell ChatGPT the following. You are going to pretend to be a senior engineer at a fan company. Review the following code, paying attention to security and performance. Provide output that a senior engineer would produce regarding the code, and then ask the question. This points ChatGPT to give you a better output. It sort of narrows what it's going to focus on and notice. This pattern is very useful and not only on questions regarding code. You can tell ChatGPT, for example, from now on, act as a book editor and review the following blog article focusing on readability. Or you can say, pretend you're a marketing expert, review the following slogans and suggest improvements based on other popular campaigns. After using this pattern, the quality of answers I get has increased. This pattern makes ChatGPT talk only about what I care about, which is great. Be careful not to mention leaving people or people considered harmful, since that may trigger the safety filters of ChatGPT. The recipe pattern. This pattern is useful if you have something you want to accomplish. You know the ingredients and sort of know the steps to get there, but you need help putting them all together. This pattern is especially useful if you are a programmer. It saves you lots of time and it helps you actually understand what the code is doing. This pattern is like telling ChatGPT you want to make a cake. You have flour, water, and sugar. You know you have to mix those, but you are not sure how, on which order, and what to do next. A real world example would be something like, I'm trying to write a Rust program to encrypt data. I know I have to read user input, validate it, encrypt it, and return the encrypted data. Please provide a complete sequence of steps for me. Fill in any missing steps and identify any unnecessary steps. The filling any missing steps statement is there so ChatGPT fills in the gaps rather than asking us follow-up questions in case we missed something. And the last statement of identify any unnecessary steps is useful because it tells ChatGPT to find inaccuracies in our request to make the recipe better. The reflection pattern. I think all junior developers should use this pattern. As we know, even with Google and Stack Overflow, you should never just copy paste code. You should always understand what the code is doing. Using the reflection pattern, you can ask ChatGPT to explain the reasoning behind each answer, which will help you understand the output more and can potentially help you catch the model in those times when it is hallucinating. So next time, before you ask a question, tell ChatGPT the following. When you provide an answer, please explain the reasoning and assumptions behind your answer. Explain your choices and address any potential limitations or edge 
cases and then ask your question. You will find that the answers will be even more detailed and ChatGPT will provide even more background information on its answers than normal. The refusal breaker pattern. I'm sure you have asked a question before that ChatGPT told you it can't answer because of knowledge limits, safety or whatever. This pattern is to sort of use ChatGPT against itself by helping you reword or reframe the question that you want to ask so that it can be answered. Before you ask a question, write this down to ChatGPT. Whenever you can't answer a question, explain why you can't answer the question. Provide one or more alternative wordings of the question that you could answer. After you do this and ask your question, and if ChatGPT can't answer it, you will see it give you a couple of alternative questions that will answer your original query that ChatGPT will be able to answer. The flipped interaction pattern. This is my absolute favorite pattern. Usually when asking something to ChatGPT, we have to think hard about how to structure the question, provide all the required information, etc. It's exhausting, but not with this pattern. Using this technique, we sort of flip the script, making ChatGPT ask us questions until it accomplishes what we want. This pattern is useful when you know what you want, but you don't know the steps to get there and you don't know what information ChatGPT needs to help you get there. An example could be something like this. I want you to ask me questions to deploy a Rust binary to a web server located in AWS. When you have all the information you need, write a bash script to automate the deployment. After you run this query, you will find ChatGPT asking you for the information it needs to help you, which is awesome. All you have to do is answer. It's way easier to ask for things this way, rather than first having to find out what information does ChatGPT need and the steps and all that. Rather than you driving the conversation, we let ChatGPT drive it. So we give it exactly what it needs to help us in as little messages and interactions as possible. That's it for this video. If you found it useful, please like it, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments what is your favorite pattern from this list. Or if you have some custom pattern that works well for you, share it on the comments so we can all become more productive. If you would like to learn to code for free, Click the link below where you can take free courses on JavaScript, Python, React, React Native, Go, Dart, Flutter, and many others, all for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Onjena, kamsahago, sanahamida. See you on the next one. Daome bye bye.